Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixum Perfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day and turning this day into an absolutely brilliant and magnificent one. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you how you can get access to free stock photos for free right inside of Photoshop. Yes, you heard that right. You don't have to go to your browser, search for stock photos, download it, find it in a folder, and then import it back into Photoshop. It is such a long process. All you have to do is to search for stock photos, and you can do that inside of Photoshop and get it directly onto your canvas. Wouldn't that be fantastic? And to do this, we're going to use some special plugins. And in this video, we're going to talk about what these plugins are, where can you find them, which one is the better one. We're going to compare each one of those and see which one is better in what scenario. And we'll also learn how to install them. And finally, the most important part, we'll learn how to use these features in real world scenarios like compositing, designing, or even color grading. There's so much to cover. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Google Chrome this time or any browser that you use. And if you're using Internet Explorer, I applaud you for your patience. Anyway, once you get into that, just go to exchange.adobe.com. Inside of that, click on Adobe Creative Cloud. This is where you will find lots of Photoshop extensions. Some are free, some are paid. What we're looking for is free stock photo plugins for Photoshop. So let's just go ahead and search stock and then make sure free is checked and also Photoshop is turned on. Now keep in mind, some of these are from major companies that sell stock photos like Shutterstock and Getty Images. Now, although these are free to download the plugin, but you would have to buy those individual photos. So in this case, I recommend two. The first one is Pexos and the second one is Stock Solo. We will compare both of them and now let's learn how do you install these extensions. The first way is the easiest way. Make sure that you're logged into your Adobe account. Then you click on one of these. So let's start with Pexels. It says plugin not found. So we will try searching Pexels again. Let's try the second one this time. And there you go. Now for me at the top, it says acquired because I've already got the plugin. Let me show you what it looks like if you haven't got it in your account. So let's take any other random extension that I have not installed. And right here it says free. Just click on that, accept and continue. Try to read that. I know you won't and I won't either. Anyway, click on Open Creative Cloud Desktop App. Make sure you have that app installed. Now here it will give you a prompt whether you want to install the plugin. Simply hit OK and it will be installed. As simple as that. Now make sure while you're doing that, Photoshop is closed. If it isn't, this application will tell you to close Photoshop and from then on you can just install it. Now, if this process doesn't work for you, and yes, you know good and hell well I'm talking to you. Yes, you. If this doesn't work for you, by now you know what I mean then there's another way. Let's take the stock solo extension for example. Now once you have clicked on the free and once it is acquired, then you can go to my exchange and all of your acquired extensions should show up right here. Find out the one that you want to install like stock solo, click on installation help and from here simply download the ZXP file. So click on download stock solo, locate where you want to save it and simply click on save. Now you need a ZXP or ZXP installer, however you pronounce it, ZZ. It really doesn't matter. But anyway, the download link to that application is in the description. Once you launch the ZXP installer, just simply drag and drop the ZXP file that we just downloaded and it will install it into Adobe applications. Now when you start Photoshop, it should be there. And there you go, my friend. Those are the two ways of doing it for two kinds of people. You know what I mean. Finally, back in the magical world of Photoshop and to access the plugin, simply go to the plugins menu and just access it. Now keep in mind, Pexels was the plugin which we installed directly from the Creative Cloud application. That's why it shows up inside of plugins. If you went the ZXP route and installed it using the second method where we used the ZXP installer, it should be inside extensions. So let's go to window, extensions, and here, as you can see, stock solo is there since we installed it using the ZXP installer. First of all, let's try Pexels. The great part about it is that whatever image you place, for example, let's choose this one. If you click on it, it's placed as a smart object. That's one of the advantages. Have a look. It is a smart object, isn't it? So as you already know, if you make it small and then big back again, it doesn't lose details as opposed to raster images. And then if you apply any filter, it's going to be applied as a smart filter where you can change the values later. The second advantage is that as you browse through the photos, for example, I just searched boat. Let's say you want to place a boat right over there. And as you hover over images, what I like here is that it gives you the web page link of the image. So if you click on the photographer's name or click on in here, it takes you there. For example, I want to place, let's find a good boat that you can place right over there. And the more you scroll, the more images continue to be loaded. Let's say this is the one. So if you click here or there, 
it takes you to the same photo on the website. Big shout out to Rachel Claire. And you can give credit to the photographer right here and you can download different sizes. So it opens up a lot of opportunities. You can collect it, you can favorite it lots of options. Number three, what I like about Pexels is that you have a set of tags right here at the top. So if you're looking for landscapes, if you're looking for texture, if you're looking for space, so you can directly click on in here, click on more tags, you have wildlife. So let's say I was looking for just textures, I would click on in there and it loads up texture photos. It just simply types up texture at the top. That's it. But it gives you a very quick access to a category of stock photos. Number four thing that I like here is that let's say you're scrolling through images. And if there's an image that you want to open by itself on a separate document, you can hold the alt key or the option key, click on it, and it just opens in a separate document. Pretty cool. Number five thing that I like is that as you continue to scroll, it keeps on loading more and more images automatically. You don't have to go to the next page. You don't have to click on load more, none of that. Number six and the final thing that I like here is that you can just drag it, make it larger and have more images loaded right here. Right now my screen is scaled and I've made everything on my monitor bigger so that it's easy for you to see. But in normal real life regular scenarios, you would load more and more images right here. Now let's talk about a few cons with Pexels. Number one thing is that it's just one website. Now it's not the fault of Pexels. When you search for images right here, it just searches one website and that is Pexels. That's it. There are other extensions that search multiple websites. Number two con is that although the Pexels website itself has a like and collect button, but if you look at the extension, it would have been amazing if we could just favorite certain photos right here and create a collection. The third biggest con, especially for general situation is that it just creates a clipping mask. I don't know why. Let's say you created a layer and painted something on it. And on top of it, I want to add an image. I would just go to Pexels and then probably click on any one of these images. Let's say this one, and it would be loaded as a clipping mask. Although it might be good for designing, but let's say I just want to load it as a simple layer. I cannot do that. I would have to create a new layer and then if I click on an image, it's just taking time. Then if I click on an image, it would load that separately. Now let's talk about the stock solo extension and let's start with the pros. We can load it by going to window, extensions, and then stock solo. Now, if you had installed it through the creative cloud route directly, you can find it inside of plugins. No, I'm not interested. And of course you can also search Adobe stock that is paid. So click on settings. I don't want Adobe stock, click on save. It's fine. And the number one advantage of Stock Solo is that you can search multiple platforms. I just showed it to you. If you go to settings, you can search Unsplash, Pexels, and Pixabay all at once. Isn't that cool? And as you hover over the images, you can see which platforms are they from. So this one is from Pixabay. This one is from Pexels. It's like a food court in a mall where you can order from multiple restaurants. So it's awesome. The second thing that I like here is that it shows you the resolution. Let's say you're working on a very high resolution image. And if you click on something and it's a very low resolution and it's not working for your composite or your design, it's of no use. You would be wasting time. If you hover over it, have a look. It shows you the resolution. That's a plus. Quick note, this extension is making Photoshop very, very slow. As I was browsing through images, it just froze. I cannot do anything. The whole Photoshop is froze. I've tried twice and thrice, it happens time and again with this extension. So I'm just going to install it via the Creative Cloud route because if you just install the ZXP, it seems that it's installing a little previous version. So let me just quickly do that. Number three thing that I like here is that any image that you place here is placed as smart objects, but they're not clipped to the layer as Pixels does. So you can just adjust it whatever way you want. It is just a simple layer right there. Now, every image has a link to the photographer's profile. So if you hover over it, if you click on it, it just takes you there. Big shout out to Saur of Mishra. Great job. Amazing photos. I would love to have your bikes and cars as well. XUV 700 IC. I know what you're thinking. Let's start with cons. And the number one con is related to it. And that is, if you click on it, it takes you to the photographer's profile, but it doesn't take you to the photo page. If it simply took you to the photo page, it would have the photographer's profile as well by default. The number two con is that there are no tags. So if you're looking for a category of images, as we saw with Pexos, there were landscape travel. There are no preset tags at the top. Number three con is that as of what I know, you cannot open an image in a new tab. There is just place option. I tried holding shift control alt. None of that helps. If you know a way, let me know in the comments. Maybe if I close this and then maybe if you go back to Photoshop and if you click on any one of these, see, it says, please open a document first. But if you know a way, I haven't figured it out yet. Let me know in the comments. It would help other people as well. Now coming to the biggest issue with Stock Solo. 
Maybe it's just this version that I installed from Creative Cloud. Maybe in future they will fix it. But right now, if you look at some images and if you just click on place, it just places a very low resolution version of it. Let's collapse this and make it bigger. You would notice that this is very low resolution. Double click on the thumbnail. It will open the smart object on another document. Have a look at the resolution. It's 1024 by 683, just that. But if you look at the original image in the website, if we open Stock Solo, and if we try to find it, it'll open up the author's page, but I think we can find the image. That's why I really wished it opened the image page on the website. Finally found the photo. And if you click on the drop down, have a look. The original size is 7360 by 4912. And the one that loads is just 1024. So all in all, there are pros and cons to all of them. It's just handy to have some of these extensions right into Photoshop. Now let's talk about the real world use case scenarios of these features. Number one is simply compositing. This is a nice image. Let's say we want to play some birds here. So if we search for birds flying, just scroll through, you can find lots of interesting images. Now, the methods of compositing is something we have covered bazillions, not bazillions, but I'm exaggerating lots of times. You can watch this playlist on compositing. This might help you. So let's place this one and make it larger. And we can simply change the blend mode of this one from normal to multiply because multiply is a blend mode which erases anything that is 100% white. Now, if we choose multiply, a little bit of the background is still showing up. That means those areas were not completely white. For that, let's create a curves adjustment layer and make sure it limits just to these birds. Click on this button and take the right slider to the left. It makes the brights brighter. There we go. It's gone. Pretty nice. Let's move on to the second example with color grading. Yes, you heard it right. We can do color grading, but you might be thinking, Unmesh, color grading with stock photos? How? Blend modes, right? So let's open up this and let's say I want some sunset colors in there. So let's search for sunset. And right here, let's go for something whose colors and contrast you want in there. So let's scroll down. I think maybe this would be fine. Let's click on place. Now we want the face area to be a little more brighter. So let's press Ctrl or Command D, right click on it. And first, let's flip it horizontally so that the sun is this side and make it a little larger like this. Let's make sure this, the sun is just around the face. And now blur it because we don't want any of the details. Let's go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. 500 is fine. Hit OK and simply change the blend mode from normal to soft light. That's all. Have a look. Here's the before. Here is the after. Such a major difference, isn't it? Moving on to example number three, let's say you were designing something and here you have created a placeholder for an image. So this is the ellipse right there. On top of that, you just wanna make sure that a musical image just fits in right there with the ellipse layer selected. This time, let's try pixels. Let's go to plugins, pixels. Let's open that because it creates a clipping mask. I told you it would be an advantage if you were creating designs. And there's tons that we can use right here. Let's go for this one. Click on that. And as you can see, it creates a clipping mask. Pretty cool. Press Ctrl or Command D and then you can adjust that. All right, there you go. That looks okay. Probably we should have chosen some other image, but you get the point. So that's how to get free access to free stock photos for free right inside of Photoshop. Now there are a plethora of applications of this. We just discussed a few of them. Now keep in mind, free stock photos are of to a level of certain quality. Some can be very good, but if you're looking for premium stock photos, you have to go to sites like Shutterstock, Getty Images, uh, Adobe Stock, Envato Elements and others. Now, I personally use Envato Elements. It's not that uh, Shutterstock is not worth it. I use Envato Elements because you just pay a regular monthly fee, fixed monthly fee, and you can download whatever you want. It's all unlimited. You can download as many images you want. And along with images, you get stock videos. You get uh, Photoshop plugins, Photoshop brushes, layer styles. You get 3D images to download you get sound effects, lots of them. So I highly recommend checking it out. I think they're running a discount on annual subscription. So check the link in the description for more details. Now, there are times where I just don't find the image that I'm looking for in Envato Elements. So then I would go to places like Shutterstock or Adobe Stock. It's very rare. But sometimes if you're looking for a very specific image, these sites might have it. But keep in mind, they have it because it can be very, very expensive. If you look at Shutterstock or Adobe Stock, you pay 
per image. And if you're going for extensive license or in some stock sites, premium image, it can be like really crazy expensive. Unless you're looking for a very specific image, I won't go to those sites. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.